I now give the floor to His Excellency Ezekiel Nibijira, Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Burundi. Madame. Madame Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces, President of the 73rd Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Majesties, United Nations Secretary General, Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. As I begin, allow me to give thanks to God the Almighty, who has allowed us to meet here in this magnificent city of New York, which is hosting the 73rd session of the General Assembly of our organization. President, allow me also to extend to you the most sincere greetings from His Excellency, Mr. Pierre Kurunziza, President of the Republic of Burundi, who was not able to travel to New York, but has given me the task, the honourable task of representing him. My delegation would like to echo all those who have spoken before me at this rostrum to congratulate you, President, warmly and heartily on your outstanding election to preside over this 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly. As the fourth woman out of 73 presidents of the General Assembly, we have no doubt that you will be able to provide a feminine perspective to ensure that this session is a resounding success. Naturally, you may count on the full support and cooperation of Burundi throughout your tenure. My delegation would also like to seize this opportunity that we have to pay a well-deserved tribute to your predecessor, Mr. Miroslav Lightchuk, for having so brilliantly led the work of the 72nd session and for having achieved the results that we have. Our great appreciation also extends to Mr. Antonio Guterres, UN Secretary General, for the laudable efforts he has already made in so little time since he took up his position at the head of our organization. President, my delegation profoundly laments the passing of Kofi Annan, former Secretary General. His death is a loss for all Africans and for the whole United Nations family, and irremediably so. We pay particular tribute to him for his tireless work and his devotion to the cause of peace and global development. President, my delegation welcomes the choice of the theme for this session entitled Making the United Nations Relevant to All People, a Global Leadership and Shared Responsibilities for Peaceful, Equitable and Sustainable Societies. This is a topic that arrives at the right moment and at a time where the fragmentation and polarization of the world threaten the multilateralism which, on which we wish to build the respect for the rule of law 
and shared responsibilities in how we manage global issues. President, for the substantive part of my intervention, I will focus on the general situation in my country, Burundi, before addressing the global challenges of this day and age. And solutions to these challenges require concerted responses. On a political level, Burundi, on the 17th of May 2018, organised in a calm and peaceful fashion a constitutional referendum. This was preceded by broad popular consultations, which allowed the whole population in its rich political, uh, ethnic, regional diversity to express their views transparently on the content of this new law. As I'm sure you'll recall, when we enacted the new constitution on the 7th of June 2018, the President of Burundi made it known to Burundians and to the international community that his second mandate will end in 2020 and that he is ready to support the new president elected in 2020. Contrary to the discourse of some who sought to claim that he wished to fashion the new constitution for his own benefit to stay in power until 2034, this highly valuable political gesture, gesture is democratic and is an example to welcome. Now, still on politics, it would not be superfluous to highlight that the spirit of tolerance, transparency and openness of the political space is gathering strength in Burundi. The return and integration of many thousands of refugees and political leaders who had fled the country is proof of this. As it, when they return to the country, these politicians enjoy all of their civic and political rights without hindrance. The liberation of more than 2,000 prisoners at the start of this year is also forms part of this spirit of reconciliation, social cohesion and political tolerance that is running through our country. Now, on the Inter-Burundian Dialogue, my delegation would like to recall that dialogue as a means of finding peaceful solutions to political disputes has taken root in our country. Those who ask us to promote dialogue are pushing at an open door. Beyond the very laudable efforts of the East African community, Burundi has a standing forum for political parties. This is an excellent dialogue platform between authorised political parties in Burundi. It's within this framework that all political parties met in the north of Burundi on the 3rd of August 2018 for an open and informal discussion on the important issues for the 2020 elections. This meeting culminated in the adoption by more than 20 political parties of a road map towards free, inclusive and peaceful elections in 2020. The National Independent Electoral Commission under the new constitution has just been set up. This also respects political, ethnic, regional and gender inclusivity. Regional efforts are going smoothly. Contacts on the highest level have been established since the start of the year. This, at the beginning of this month, the former president of Tanzania and facilitator of the inter burundian Dialogue, His Excellency Benjamin William Makapa, dispatched his team to Burundi for constructive consultations with all stakeholders in the country with a view to organising the fifth and final round of Inter-Burundi Dialogue. 
and this working towards free, transparent and peaceful elections in 2020. On the security front, the situation in Burundi is calm, stable and entirely under control, with the exception of a few cases of crime under common law. In addition to sub-regional organisation, organisations, this positive assessment is shared by the Special Envoy of the Secretary General and by the Security Council, as demonstrated in the briefing from the 9th of August and the press statement from the 22nd of August, respectively. This return to normality in our country has allowed us, for example, to organise a constitutional referendum without any major incidents, as well as a large-scale return of refugees and political leaders, as well as the hosting of several regional and continental conferences, and also hosting eminent foreign personalities visiting Burundi. Now, in terms of the return of refugees, I am delighted to inform you that since 2016, more than 206,000 refugees have voluntarily returned to Burundi. This includes 100,000 who decided to return in 2016, 168,000 who returned home in Jan from January to August 2017, and 38,254 refugees who returned since August 2017 tripartite meeting between Burundi, Tanzania and the HCR. This voluntary return movement it continues at a satisfactory rate. However, my delegation would like to reiterate its requests to the HCR and to the friends of the region to intervene and make contact with some host countries who are holding our exiled compatriots hostage by building artificial obstacles to their voluntary return home. We would ask them also to ensure that the refugee camps remain civilian in nature in line with the 1951 Refugee Convention and or the resolu resolution 2389 from the 8th of December 2017 of the Security, Ca Security Council on the Great Lakes region. In the same vein, Burundi would reiterate its pressing call to all countries who are sheltering, nurturing and supporting those who supported the coup on the 13th of May 2015, who are still on the run, would call to extradite them to Burundi so that they can be held accountable for their actions before justice. This long-awaited extradition would be a major boon to strengthening democratic principles advocated by the UN Charter and a demonstrable rejection of any attempt to take power through anti-constitutional and violent means. Now, on human rights, Burundi reiterates how it stands ready to work and cooperate with other nations and with the United Nations to promote and protect human rights in Burundi and elsewhere in the world, following the rules established by the United Nations Charter. This noble mission will only be possible through respect, mutually respectful cooperation, frank and sincere dialogue between member states as well as recourse to accepted mechanisms, for example, the Universal Periodic Review. The dangerous trend on the part of some states to wish to transform the Human Rights Council in a tool, into a tool for exerting political pressure and for geopolitical one-upmanship in countries of the South risks compromising the goals that were that member states set for themselves when they created the council in 2006 drifting through drifting towards excessive politicization of human rights a pol policy of selectivity and double standards contravene the principles of universality and indivisibility of human rights the withdrawal of some countries from the Human Rights Council 
should not be interpreted as a negative act. It's more an acknowledgement and a disavowal of the dysfunctioning and the control of this body almost exclusively by a minority of member states. For its part, the government of Burundi remains more determined than ever to promote human rights in the res full respect of the United Nations Charter and of Resolution 6251 of the General Assembly from the 15th of March 2006, which created the Human Rights Council. Dialogue, cooperation based on mutual respect, are the cornerstone of the government of Burundi in how it promotes human rights. Now, on cooperation with the United Nations, Burundi is proud to brilliantly and actively participate in United Nations and African Union peacekeeping missions. More than 6,000 men and women from Burundi have, are deployed in different peacekeeping operations, mainly in Central Africa, the Central African Republic and in Somalia. The excellent work done by our courageous peacekeepers who have chosen voluntarily to sacrifice their lives by saving those of others far from home and in particularly difficult conditions should be appreciated and given its due recognition. To demonstrate its growing interest in peacekeeping, Burundi is proud to be one of those nations who is renewing its international commitment and action for peacekeeping on the 25th of September. In terms of the presence of Burundi on the Security Council agenda, my delegation would like to reiterate its pressing call to the Security Council so that it has the courage to withdraw Burundi from its agenda. We must note that this political and security situation currently in place in the country is calm, stable and entirely under control. It is far from being a threat to international peace and security, which is the area that in which the Security Council works. The precious time that the Council is allocating to Burundi should be dedicated to other areas of tension and conflict, of which there are many at the moment. The rightful place of Burundi today is not in the Oval Security Council chamber. It should be on the level of the United Nations agencies tasked with social economic development to boost its economic recovery. President, the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals remains a priority for Burundi. The government of Burundi has just adopted a 10-year plan entitled a National Development Plan of Burundi from 2018 to 2027. This plan seeks to re-strike the structural balance in the Burundian economy through strengthening food self-sufficiency and diversifying exports through promoting agro-industrial, commercial and extractive enterprises, the development of the energy sector and the craftsmanship sector, the construction and maintenance of infrastructures that support growth, improving access to social services, particularly education, health care and social protection, the continuation of programmes on environmental protection and development of the territory and improving financial governance and decentralisation. Furthermore, the development of regional and international partnerships. The government of Burundi, therefore, would call on all bilateral and multilateral partners to refer to this in their projects that support the Burundian people and to accompany it in its implementation. Now, on 
unilateral economic sanctions that partners at the European Union have imposed on Burundi in the wake of the election fever of 2015, my delegation would like to inform the international community that the context in which these sanctions were imposed has fundamentally changed. My delegation would also recall that following the undisputed return of peace and security in the country, the summit of heads of state of the African Union, was, which was held at the start of July in Mauritania, adopted a resolution asking the European Union to lift the unjust and immoral sanctions that are weighing heavily on Burundi. At the end of this meeting held in New York on the 25th of September 2018, the African Union Peace and Security Council published a communique reiterating the support, their, their call to uh, and support for the summit of heads of states of, African, of the African Union to lift sanctions, the political sanctions, to create the conditions for social economic recovery of our country. And the same, at the same time, the African Union Peace and Security Council welcomed the return of peace and stability in Burundi. President, as we look at global issues, Burundi believes that the issue of migration should be resolved in a constructive and concerted fashion involving all member states. Burundi fully supports the process underway within our shared organisation, which is working towards the adoption in December 2018 in Marrakesh, Morocco, of the Global Compact for Safe, Regular and Orderly Migration. President, we cannot ignore that climate change is an existential threat to social, economic and sustainable development in Africa and elsewhere. If we not, do not take immediate and coordinated action, it will be even more difficult and costly to adapt to the future consequences of these changes. It is more pressing than ever for every member state to respect its commitments that it freely undertook within the Paris Climate Agreement. In the same vein, developed countries should honour their commitments to finance the adaptation of southern economies to the effects of global warming. On the Sustainable Development Goals, they are a call to action for all countries, whether they be poor, rich or middle income, to promote prosperity while protecting the planet, so that we can achieve the 17 SDGs that we adopted in 2015, we need to bring together two ingredients, the political will of all leaders and the availability of suitable and predictable financing. Particular attention should be paid to support the efforts of the most vulnerable countries as well as less developed countries, landlocked countries, small island developing states, and post-conflict countries. President, the quest for peace and stability is of concern to us all. We therefore welcome recent progress made in the search for lasting African solutions to African problems. We commend the new positive developments for peace in South Sudan, as well as the welcome wind of change in policy in the Horn of Africa. We applaud the fact that these new initiatives for peace coincide with the Nelson Mandela decade of 2019-2028, dedicated to peace, that we adopted in the political declaration from the 24th of November in this very chamber. The absence to solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the current status quo foster insecurity and destabilisation in the Middle East. The international community should mobilise to find a solution to this conflict which has lasted for more than 50 years now. Burundi supports the vision 
of a region where two states, Israel and Palestine, live side by side within safe and recognized borders in peace and mutual respect in line with relevant Security Council resolutions. This is the only viable solution. There is no alternative. Burundi will stand shoulder to shoulder with other nations to lead the shared struggle to build a world free from acts of terror. However, we remain convinced that beyond the necessary military action, an effective fight against terrorism presupposes a fight against radicalization, which fuels is fueled by ignorance, poverty, youth unemployment, illiteracy, injustice and humiliation and exclusion. These are ideal prey for terrorism and provide it with what it needs to take root and spread before our very eyes. To conclude, President, my delegation would like to recall from this high rostrum that the realia and demands of this day and age command us that we adapt global government to the new challenges of our ever-changing world. This means that we should highlight that the revitalization of the General Assembly and the long-awaited reform of the Security Council are becoming more pressing than ever. If we want to build a United Nations that is capable of effectively responding to the legitimate aspirations of all nations. In this connection, Burundi reaffirms its commitment to the common African position on Security Council reform as contained in the Eselwini Consensus. It is high time to repair the historic injustice against Africa. The only continent which is not represented amongst permanent members and is underrepresented amongst non-permanent members of the Security Council. I thank you very much for your kind attention. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Burundi for his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency the Foreign Affairs Minister from Brunei Darussalam.